AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guests are Bob and Fran German. They are in their 80s. You're not going to believe it. And they are going to tell you a story about how the plant-based diet saved their life, literally. Please welcome from North Carolina, Bob and Fran. It's so nice to meet you. You guys look amazing. Thank Hello you. there. Good to see you. Yeah, we're feeling better than ever. We're older than ever, but we're feeling better than ever. <laughs> well, how did this happen? <laughs> how did it happen? Well, I think that unfolds with our story. So if you like, uh, we, can, we can start with that. Uh, it's both of us were saved by switching to a, a whole food plant-based diet. So not just one. So our story is sort of a a double header here. Yeah. Well, we'll start with Fran, if it's okay with you. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm just curious how you guys even found out about the plant-based diet. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what happened. First of all, I know that your, your emphasis is basically, basically on weight loss. Fortunately or unfortunately, Bob and I never had a weight problem. Because of that, we ate everything and, you know, just never gained weight. So we never gave it any thought. In November of 1992, I woke up one morning and I couldn't open one eye. Now I had been experiencing some mild muscular changes but didn't give it any thought until that morning. We were living in the Fort Lauderdale, Florida area at the time. I called my doctor, he had me come, had me come over right away and he took one look at me and he said, I think you have Bell's palsy. And I said to him, no, I think I have myasthenia gravis. Now, I don't even know if you're familiar with that disease. It's a kind of a rare neuromuscular disease. Not a lot of people know about it. How in the world I came up with that, I have no clue. So anyway, he sent me across the street to the neurologist. The neurologist said, I'm going to give you what's called a tinselin test. It was a shot in my arm. My eye popped open. And he said, it is myasthenia gravis. And he started prescribing drugs. I went back to my family doctor and he, he said, I'll never forget it. He said, myasthenia gravis is incurable. It, you will be on medication for the rest of your life and it will shorten your life. Okay, we call that a nocebo when the doctor scare, scares the bejeebies out of you. <laughs> okay, well, being a stubborn person, I didn't take this laying down. I, um, I tried everything I could to improve my health and I really went through some very bad times. Um, I just wanna interject that we went to 11 different neurologists. Yeah, over a period of time. Across the country. And they all had the same answer. Yeah. There's no hope. You're going to be on medicine all your life. Your life will be short. You'll have this terrific weakness from the neck up. And there were times when I, her, Fran's speech was so slurred, I couldn't understand what my wife was even saying. There were times she, 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 she had double vision most of the time, and uh, didn't mean to steal your thunder here. That's okay. <laughs> and. There were times she was so weak, she couldn't lift her head off of the pillow, but that didn't stop her. Yeah, actually, for those of you out there who don't know Greek, myasthenia gravis in Greek means severe muscle weakness, and it couldn't have been a more accurate name. Um, it was, I was very, very sick, and at one point I wound up in ICU for five days. Um, it was pretty bad. But strangely, here we are living in the Fort Lauderdale area in a three county area where there are millions of people. I never met another person with myasthenia gravis. The, the month that we moved to Henderson, Hendersonville, North Carolina in this little town, Bob noticed in the newspaper that there was a myasthenia gravis support group that met once a month here and we started going. And I didn't learn a whole lot, but I did notice is that when somebody gets sick with, a, with a, some type of a disease, they tend to get multiple diseases because the body breaks down. 
everybody who had MG also had heart disease or diabetes or lung disease, other conditions. Because I was taking really good care of myself, fortunately, I only had one disease, but that was one too many. You know, there's, there's an expression, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Well, one month, the, uh, the group had a um, dietitian come from Asheville to speak to the group. And with a slide presentation, he explained how even eating white meat chicken compromises your immune system. Because I thought I was eating pretty healthy. Now I was eating white meat chicken, turkey, fish, you know, the healthy stuff, right? <laughs> okay. He recommended reading the China study and diet for a new America by John Robbins. I went home, got both books, read them, and we switched to a plant-based diet at that point. Now, while this was going on, Bob also developed a problem. May I, you wanna do it? Sure. I'll, I'll, <laughs> okay. I'll do it. Uh, my, my story isn't as uh, unusual, <laughs> but uh, I was doing a lot of power walking. We were both power walking quite a bit and I switched surfaces. So I, I developed a pain in my groin. I went to a local neuro, uh, urologist. He examined me, he couldn't find anything. He said, but just to be sure, let's do a CAT scan. So I did the CAT scan, even though I didn't want to do the CAT scan, I did it. And he said, I think you just pulled a muscle in your groin, but take a look at this. So he takes me in his private office and he shows me on the lit screen that there was a, a growth on the outside of my left kidney. And uh, he said, in my opinion, you need to have this removed fast and I'm not capable of doing that. I would suggest you go to uh, the Duke University Medical School, uh, medical uh, facility in uh, Durham, North Carolina, which is an internationally known uh, medical center, cancer center. I went there. I met with a specialist who said he could fly in special equipment and do what's called a cryoablation surgery, where they freeze this uh, tumor off my, uh, my uh, kidney. And that's what he did. He said he couldn't biopsy it in advance because if it broke open and it was cancerous, it would spread quickly. But he did do a biopsy after the removal of the growth. And he said, you have uh, kidney cancer, renal cell carcinoma. I'll never forget that. I had him repeat it three times because I've been a pretty healthy person. And all of a sudden, my wife is sick. And now I have kidney cancer. What are we going to do? So we're driving back to our little old town of Hendersonville, North Carolina. And Fran said, we have to change our lifestyle. And it's going to start with our food consumption. And that was the beginning of uh, our, our uh, journey onto eating a whole food plant-based uh, diet. Now that was almost 15 years ago. May I ask how old you were at the time? We were 65. How do you, I was 52 when I got sick. Yeah, but we switched when we were 65. Can't do the so, math. <laughs> so yeah, it was for health reasons. As we got into this, we started saying, well, we're here for the environment as well. We're here for the safety and welfare of animals too. Uh, but mainly our start was to improve our health. The doctor, by the way, who did the surgery sort of laughed at me when I said we're switching to a plant-based diet. And uh, he, he sort of scared me. He said, well, this, this cancer is known to return. So that just fortified our movement to a uh, switching our diet. But ironically, 
after I, re, uh, after I was concluded my follow-up visits, I learned that he went to a whole food plant-based mm -hmm. diet as well. And so maybe in a way I helped the doctor <laughs> as, an, you know, as, a, as an example. Now, I, I just want to say, um, I know that most people who do switch to a plant-based diet, when they do it, they do it basically for the animals. Um, you know, at least most people that I've come into contact with, they, they have, you know, they're, they're vegans, they want to protect the environment and the animals. I have given talks all over uh, in town and also in Florida, and I find that most people aren't willing, aren't willing to change their diet, even if they are sick. But there have been so many stories of people who did change their diet and got better. People who had diabetes for so many years and within months of changing their diet, no longer had diabetes. I'm talking about type two diabetes. Um, so, I mean, to me, it's just, there's no question that what we are, what we eat. I mean, it's that simple. And I think our food supply isn't like it was when we were younger either. I mean, it's not as healthy as it was. So um, we feel very strongly about a plant, whole food plant-based diet. And we are having such a good time now because we just got an air fryer and I am having amazing <laughs> results with that. I mean, it, it, I didn't want one, I was putting it off, <laughs> didn't want another appliance. But it's been great. <laughs> yeah. We, Can't you know, wait to see what I'm gonna make next. <laughs> we, we eat like kings. This is like <laughs> this is so good. And now with <laughs> with with uh, the COVID, we don't go out to eat. And I'm experimenting with all kinds of wonderful recipes that I can find. You can just Google anything you want on the internet now and find a recipe. It isn't Google like it used to be where yeah. You know, and and if, and if it's got something with oil in it, we just eliminate the oil. It's no big deal. Well, people are saying like, Elspeth, you guys don't look 80. I don't know what you look like at 65, but I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing you look better now. I, well, I'll tell you, I definitely look better now because I looked terrible when I was sick. I mean, I couldn't keep my eyes open. Um, I had such severe double vision that I couldn't drive for what, seven years? Yeah, couldn't drive a car. Um, actually, we were both realtors in South Florida, and we had to, we chose to stop working because I couldn't work, and we worked as a team. So, um, you know, it really affected our lives dramatically. But we feel very, very fortunate that we found a solution to our problems. Well, what I love about your story is that you really were late adopters. It just proves oh, yeah. that it's never too late to make the change. Exactly. That is the essence of our story. I mean, we started when we were, you know, on Social Security. It was, <laughs> it was a, a late in life thing. But we don't think, you know, getting older does not necessarily mean getting sicker. A lot of people have the attitude, well, you know, as I get old, I'm going to get sick. But we don't buy that at all. And I want to express my appreciation to uh, Chef AJ for letting us on her show to tell our story. And I know she's had very famous people and also other people like us who have the story because we, we wanna be models for others. We, if you are sick, if you're thinking about changing your diet or I'm sick, what can I do? I tell you, if you just give this a try, even if you try, for 30 days, it can change your life. We do a lot of talks locally, and we have seen people that have uh, tried it for 30 or 45 days, reverse their diabetes. I mean, you hear all the, uh, you know, the famous online uh, doctors that talk about this stuff. It and really I'm telling works. you, in our little <laughs> town of 10,000 people, we've seen this happen. So uh, we've seen tremendous weight loss stories success stories, people that never thought they could, they could ever lose weight. And what? when we tell them that, you know, you can literally eat about all you want and you'll still lose weight. Yeah. It's I, a, it's um, a good thing. About two years ago, we 
our doctor retired and we, you know, sometimes when one door closes, another one opens, we discovered that there was a plant-based diet in our community, doctor yeah. in our community, and we switched to him. And the first thing he had us do was read Dr. Esselstyn's book on um, heart disease, heart preventing heart. or reversing heart disease. Now we didn't have heart disease and I was using oil, olive oil. I thought, gee, that's the healthy oil. And after reading this book, I cut out the oil and we each lost 10 pounds, even though we didn't have to, because the oil was just wasted calories. It was empty calories. And um, so we, we try to encourage people to eliminate the oil from their diet. It isn't necessary to have oil. There is almost nothing that you can't make without oil now. I know, and it's crazy because it doesn't even taste good. I don't, I don't understand it, the people's obsession with oil. It's expensive. It doesn't taste good. It, I, I mean, I just don't get it. No, I don't either. Water or our vegetable broth works just fine. <laughs> Absolutely. So I bet you're gonna. I love your your saying. You want to die as young as possible, as long as. Uh, what, what's that saying you have? It's it's our, fantastic. <laughs> our, our goal in life. And we hope others take on our goal in life is to die young as late as possible. So when we talk about young, we talk about healthy, we talk about high energy, we talk about uh, living a, a youthfulness, so to speak, no matter what your age is. And you can start that you don't have to be old, you don't have to be 65 to start on this. You can be 25. In fact, we have a YouTube channel where we thought we're going to appeal to a, a bunch of old people, but our biggest audience is from 25 to 40. So when we talk about being young at any age, it, that's literally the situation. I mean, I, I think we all know people in their 30s who are old. You know, yeah. they think old, they, they kind of just drag themselves around, but... Um, with these 25 to 35 year old people who are on our YouTube channel, there's two things. They either want to continue to be young for themselves or in many cases, they say, God, how do I get my folks to do Parent, what you're parents, doing? Yeah. You know, my parents are getting older, they're getting sicker, uh, they're not active. God, I wish they would change, you know, so that would be good. You're probably gonna outlive all your doctors. We've, well, we've already outlived four. Yeah. We, have. we have. And you don't look like you have any cognitive decline whatsoever. We, uh, not too much. No. Can I just share with you what we had for dinner tonight? Of course. <laughs> so we spent a lot of our time in, uh, in Southeast Asia over the years. And... Uh, uh, we, we've been, to, we've traveled throughout extensively throughout Southeast Asia. So I had this taste for, uh, for pho. Vietnamese pho. And Fran made a vegan Vietnamese spectacular dinner tonight with pho. And uh, now you know what that is? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, technically pho is not vegan. They call that a vegetable noodle soup because <laughs> the pho has pork or beef in it. But I made a vegetarian version. I just kind of duplicated the taste. I got shiitake mushrooms and bean sprouts and- um, It was fantastic. And air fried tofu. <laughs> it, was, it was very good. Yeah. Sounds delicious. What have you been able to, I know you have children and grandchildren. Have they, what have they said about your change and were you able to influence them in any way? We have. Yes. yes. Yeah. Just by, uh, <laughs> by not really telling them what to do, but just by watching us. Well, let me just say that our son in, in California was um, plant-based plant before us. And he actually helped me uh, when the time came for me to switch. Um, I will say this, I was on prednisone for 16 years. And that's a pretty harmful drug. And it's very hard to get off of. And my neurologist here 
was taking me off the prednisone too quickly. And when I, I felt like the myasthenia was getting worse instead of better. So when I went to visit my son in California, he took me to a plant-based doctor that near San Diego. And he explained that prednisone shuts down your adrenal glands and you have to build up your adrenal glands before you can get off the prednisone. So he did that, he built me up and then he took me down off the prednisone so slowly that I felt fine the whole time. Now, doctors don't know that necessarily. Great. You know, and I hate to say it, but most doctors don't know a thing about nutrition. <laughs> well, it's true. They don't yeah. get it in medical school or if so, not very much. Yeah. yeah. I, I did want to add one last thing on Fran's story. Fran takes no medicine, zero, nothing. And I keep getting calls from the uh, our health insurance yeah. company. Can we say Honest it? to God, they're saying, you're not taking care of yourself. <laughs> you're not seeing your doctor every two weeks. You're, you're not taking any any prescription drugs. That's hilarious that that, 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 is. that is hilarious that that's the insurance companies. The insurance company is worried because you're not taking medicine <laughs> and seeing your doctor. Yeah. You're too healthy. We don't like you. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It's just, it's, it's so inspiring. I mean, they should study you at Loma Linda. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, one problem that we, not a problem, but one co concern as we age is do we want to stay in our house or do we want to move into an assisted living community? And we've called around. There's some very nice ones around here, but nobody can feed us. They have, they said, you can, you can cook your own. Well, if I can cook my own, I can stay here. So maybe I'll go to Loma Linda. <laughs> yeah. T Tamara says 80. Wow. That's amazing to grow old with your partner and to get to be healthy and stay in your home together. I work in a nursing home. So this is a big deal to me. Yeah. yeah. It's been wonderful. We've had a, a wonderful life together in this last, we call it the third third of our lives was when we switched and that diet change just just boosted our energy and it just made us happier than we've ever been and to answer your question uh our uh, oh, yeah i forgot about the rest of yeah. the kids <laughs> so we have one one uh granddaughter that is vegan she's a college student we have one that's uh, almost vegan. Almost vegan. And one that's kind of vegan. <laughs> yeah. And we, we have changed. I, I think some of our family members have uh, have gone to a more uh, plant-based, uh, plant-rich diet. Maybe not 100%, but they're getting there. And yeah. we don't push it on them. Uh, we just say, look look at us. Well, it sounds like the grandkids are smarter than the kids. Oh, yeah, aren't they for always? sure. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you a story. Our our granddaughter who has switched to a plant-based diet is a, an athlete in college and the team has a nutritionist and the nutritionist told her that she has to eat fish for protein. <laughs> well, 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 may I ask what sport is she doing? Is she's she? a soccer player, division one at the um, okay. university. Okay. I can't well, say which school. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the thing. I interviewed the the tennis coach at Brandeis and okay. he does the actual opposite. He tells his students to, to his students to go plant-based. So maybe she, she yeah. could watch that interview because she, that, it's she not watched, true. Oh, she watched the movie. Um, I keep forgetting. Game that. Changers. Game, Game changers. changers. And she, you know, they tested her blood. They tested her muscle mass. Her blood work is perfect. Her muscle mass has increased, but the nutritionist keeps saying you have to eat fish. So she says, he just, she just, doesn't listen to her. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't listen. You know, so so Lisa writes, I like when you said that you didn't have a weight problem. You ate anything and everything. Health issues don't always present in people that are overweight. And while that's true, I guess if you could say the nice thing sometimes about being overweight is then people find this, be, you know, because they want to, they want to change their appearance, even right. maybe so sometimes more so than the health. So I think sometimes it's worse when you're not overweight because you really didn't know you had any diseases until you got sick. That's right. That's right. Exactly. So that's why I said we didn't have a weight problem. So we ate everything and thought we were doing just fine. Did um, you end up losing weight though? Because I know my husband's always been thin, but when he switched to no oil, he lost an additional nine well, we pounds. We lost about 10 we pounds. We each lost 10 pounds. And strangely, we, 
we are very, very big eaters. I mean, I, <laughs> people can't get over how much food we eat and we <laughs> don't gain. You don't gain if you eat the right food. I mean, it's that simple. We live to eat. Some people yeah. eat to live. We love to eat. <laughs> that's, a, that's amazing. You know, I think I, you guys have so much energy. I think you just need to start your own assisted living for people like <laughs> us, because I think about that too, you know, where are we going to get our food? Yeah. Yeah. You're so, right. so uh, Lulu says, I'm 54 this year. I switched to a whole food plant-based diet. No SOS for my health and the animals. It's never too late. Bob and Fran, you look amazing, happy, and so healthy. You know, I, I, I wish... I was doing this show earlier um, in, in my life because I actually had one lady come to me at the age of 90. Can you believe that? Yeah. And she ended up, ended up outliving uh, uh, two of her three children. Yeah. yeah. So, so she lost two children during, during the, eight, the eight years that she lived after going plant-based because she had heart disease, two of her children died in their 60s yeah. and she outlived them all except for one. So I, I say it's never too late. What do you got to lose, you know? Absolutely. Just, yeah, maybe a few pounds. <laughs> yeah. Colleen says, I love hearing your story. It's easy to feel hopeless about aging. And if people want to know, like, do, do you take any supplements? I mean, your skin, everything, you guys look great. Okay, I will tell you this. When I first got sick in 1992, uh, I was in the Fort Lauderdale area and a friend of mine recommended that I go to a chemist and he studied my blood and he put me on a series of sup really high quality supplements. Um, and ever since then, I have, we, well actually we've both been taking supplements. Um, I'm very careful about the quality. You know, I don't buy them at a discount store or something. Um, my doc, our doctor really doesn't believe in supplements, but at the very worst, we have expensive urine. What can I tell you? <laughs> it's worked for us we, and we're, we will continue to take them. <laughs> we're very fortunate. We think it helps us and we're gonna stay with it. We have, uh, we, have we, we, re we hardly ever get a cold. I can't remember the last time we ever got a cold or anything even mild. Right. So we're sticking with this. Yeah. This is too much. This is if the supplements are working fine. If they're not, they're not hurting us. You know, we look around and we see people our age that are like hooked on, on medicine, on testing, on doctors, on hospital visits, and that that's that. It's sort of your, their life, and there's so much more. Yeah, one thing that um, that has. It just amazes me. I know several men with prostate cancer who absolutely refuse to give up dairy products. I mean, there seems to be no doubt that dairy products are connected to hormone-driven cancers. A good friend of our, two of our friends died of prostate cancer because they not changed their diet. And um, I just don't get it. I mean, there's so much to live for and to make cheese and sour cream more important? I don't get it. Yeah, so so are you out living all of your friends? Uh, oh, uh, oh, you know, I am the oldest person in the family now. Unfortunately, uh, the oldest, our aunt was 89 and she died of COVID last uh, spring. Oh no, I'm it sorry. made me, because I'm older than Bob, it made me the oldest person in the family. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, so if there's any question you don't want to answer, you don't have to, but Joyce wants to know, do you guys take the, the, the flu vaccine every year? We ne okay. We never took one until three weeks ago. Our doctor felt that under the circumstances with COVID, um, this was the year to take it. And, and I don't know if everybody's aware that there's a new flu vaccine now for people over 65 which actually covers four strains of the flu, not just the typical one. Um, now, what we did do normally, well, like Bob said, we used to spend our winters in Southeast Asia, but uh, the last few years, we've been going to St. Augustine, Florida for the winter. But this year we decided best to stay here because uh, with the virus being so uh, rampant right now, it's best not to travel. Yeah. So what's it like being YouTubers in your 80? <laughs> well, I have to tell you, 
I started only when COVID came into being. So we are among the oldest, newest YouTubers in the history of YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> so it was a high learning curve to learn how to get on the YouTube and how to produce a video and how to edit the video. But we were in self-isolation. We needed something to do. We wanted something to do. Well, I turned to cooking. Bob turned to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you've always been a friend. No, I'm cooking a whole lot more. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fran has become a great cook, and she makes a lot of uh, Asian Asian dinners, which are very wholesome and delicious. So that's you, yeah, you, I agree. It's so hard. Technology is so hard. Oh, uh, Christy wants to know: Do you guys drink coffee every morning? Yeah. Decaf, we, but only in the morning, and we don't we don't drink it like throughout the day like others do. So I think we do it on a limited basis and it, it's fine for us. And do you guys exercise? And did you exercise before? Well, let me tell you about that. <laughs> uh, we've always worked out. We've always tried to take care of our bodies. We were a little slow in catching on to the food thing, but uh, what we do is have a morning hour of power. And we suggest that everyone do this. So the hour of power is uh, working out, maybe walking briskly for 20 minutes, uh, sitting in meditation for 10 minutes, uh, doing some Qigong. We're very big into movement. So whether it's yoga or Qigong or Tai Chi, that builds your energy like nothing else in the world. So we suggest start your day with one hour to build the power and energy up for you and it'll last the whole day. It's just a great way to, to start your day. And I don't accept any excuses. Oh, I work and I've got two kids or any, then get up an hour earlier, but do it, take care of yourself. And uh, it, it, you, you'll, you'll be glad you did. So tell us what is, what is Qigong exactly? <laughs> Qigong is a, ancient Chinese system of health and wellness. So it's uh, very slow. If, if you've ever seen uh, Tai Chi, it's a very slow. It's easy to do. We have a, a number of Qigong uh, videos on our YouTube channel. And the name of the channel is called Young at Any Age. So people can maybe test us out and we would appreciate that very much. Uh, so Qigong, well, we are actually Qigong master instructors. We've taught in over 40 countries worldwide. And uh, it's connecting the mind and the body. So the movements are very slow and graceful. There's no jumping around. There's no laying on the floor. There's no sweating. It's a matter of building qi. Qi is the word for energy. So we all need qi. And too many people are just, <laughs> is that the name of your dog? This is Bailey. She, she, okay. I, I've literally been working since 6.30 this morning. She hasn't seen me all day. See this, to me, this is, this is, this will keep you young and healthy too. Oh, for sure. And good apparently they're good right for your there. microbiome, I found out. <laughs> What's that? They're good for your microbiome, they oh, said, to have pets. Good. Yeah. So Qigong is like qi, uh, Tai Chi, but... You don't have that memorization of a sequential set of movements. You just follow us. And uh, it's just added so much to our well-being. Uh, I, I can't say did enough you, about Did it. you guys do the Qigong before you went plant-based 15 years ago? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we so that's doing, great. Uh, tai, chi, tai Chi and Qigong. And it's do, a, you know, it's a, do you guys know Myra? Yes, I was just going to say that uh, we would know Myra from Florida. Yeah, she so she said you guys used to when you were realtors you used to go to the gym at five a.m. Possibly so. <laughs> well, it sounds like you guys always sort of had some healthy habits, but you yeah. just didn't have the food right at that point. Right, exactly. exactly. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Christy wants to know what's your favorite breakfast. Okay, um, I make my own granola. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Mark Bittman. He uh, was a, a chef. 
and he had a, a granola recipe that somebody gave to me. And so I make my own out of oats with nuts and seeds and coconut and a little maple syrup. And I bake, you know, I bake it. And that's usually our breakfast. Um, What's that with some fresh fruit. And we add, uh, what? you know, the, uh, <laughs> I can't think what you add in there. Oh, flaxseed. Oh yeah, we, we have it with flaxseed flax meal on. every and to our cereal every day. That's our normal cereal. So it's fruit. On Although today I made French toast in my air fryer. <laughs> oh, that sounds good, actually. Yeah, I, I love it. Which air fryer do you have? Uh, good question. Uh, insignia. Oh, neat. Yeah. So, it was on sale. <laughs> have you guys like, I, I mean, I know right now with, with the pandemic, we're not having conferences, but before that, did you guys ever speak at any of the veg fests or anything like that? No, we, no, no. We've attended a few in Asheville, but we've... Well, they, they need to have you guys that because you, you that, that's yeah. amazing so yeah. do you we're, they want to know cindy wants to know if you share recipes on your youtube channel or uh have we shared any recipes i don't think we've really done that because uh, there's so many cooking you know oh, where you yeah. see the actual chef in action like i chef get AJ. recipes i don't <laughs> <laughs> i mean we, we're happy to share uh, recipes uh we could do that through email but but our focus is is sort of uh, uh, maybe how to transition to a plant-based uh, lifestyle. Our focus is on stress reduction. Our focus is on movement, like we talked about. Our focus is on building energy. So we have like 10 strategies. It's food is the number one, but I think it's more of a lifestyle than just a diet. Yeah, it's it's just it's just being and and want and and wanting to be healthy. It's making the right choices. There's so many bad choices out there that when so a right many one, bad diets. Yeah, and when a, when one comes along like this, you got to go for it. We haven't really done recipes because there's so many wonderful recipes. All you have to do is Google what you want, and it comes up on you know um, at least several uh, different recipes for what you want and you can pick and choose what you like. Well, Christy wants to know, she said, I would love the recipe for your Viet the, Vietnam the Vietnamese meal you were talking about. We could do that. I can get, I'm ha we're happy to share email. Uh, the real, you know, I just kind of made it up to kind of duplicate what I had in, uh, in a Vietnamese restaurant, yeah. yeah. Well, we're happy to share that. It's, sure. Uh, if, yeah. Uh, well, well, Betsy says I'm going to subscribe to their channel. I'm chi oh, deficient for sure. <laughs> uh, Alan wants to know what's your favorite dessert, and do you have dessert every day? Every day. <laughs> my, my favorite dessert is Fran. Fran makes nice cream. Do you know what nice cream is? You betcha. I have a champion juicer. Okay. Yeah. So I... the nice cream is my favorite dessert, and then Fran also makes a. Uh, a, an amazing banana bread that I, I like a lot. So on a good day, I'll have a little <laughs> ice cream and a little banana bread. We eat dessert every day with a little red wine. But it's healthy dessert, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Because it's, 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 it's different when it's not just like flour and sugar and oil. Yeah. yeah, you can make chocolate pudding out of tofu or avocado. There's so many wonderful things that you can do and still be compliant. I mean, yeah. it's easy these days. So, so people are wanting to know specifically about supplements that you take and how much do they cost? How much do your supplements cost? That you I take? have no clue. <laughs> I take, um, we each take a multivitamin. I take one without iron because women shouldn't have iron. Uh, Bob takes one that's specifically for men. Um, we take vitamin C, we take vitamin D3, um, Omega threes, uh, oh, some zinc now with you know trying to stay healthy with the virus. We've um, added zinc. Yeah, I take some magnesium. I think uh, when I take a little magnesium, I uh, it seems to enhance my sleep. So uh, we've been doing. We've yeah. added that. Uh, 
but we don't take anything very unusual. No. But our advice would be to go for a high quality yeah. company. There's so many uh, discount uh, uh, vitamins around, but uh, we're cautious about yeah. that, that. Now, one thing that, um, that, I, that my doctor years ago told me to take was vitamin K2 and strontium for my bones. Um, I was getting some osteopenia and I was on one of those drugs that, you know, got really bad reports about breaking your femur and all. So I stopped taking any kind of uh, prescription drug for my bones and switched to the, um, to the uh, strontium and K2. And I have to tell you, we hike almost every day and I've taken some pretty bad falls. Mm. And thank goodness I never broke a bone. So that's amazing. And I haven't lost any inches. So obviously, oh my uh, gosh, vitamins are working. That's terrific. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm calamity Jane. I've, I've, I've broken a lot of bones oh, in my life. <laughs> and I've lost some inches from doing that. So I, I, I really admire that. Rowan says, what are your favorite kitchen gadgets? Well, now it's my um, air fryer and my um, instant pot. Instant pot. Uh, at first, I didn't know what to do with the Instant Pot, but as time goes on, I get more and more ideas for making things, and it's been great. Uh, those are my two favorites, too. Let's see if there's a question on how do you make your nice cream? Oh, easy. <laughs> as soon as I get four ripe bananas, I peel them, I slice them about maybe two inch pieces, put them in a container and freeze them. And then I put them in the food processor and wow. Bob covers his ears <laughs> because it's really loud when you're food processing frozen bananas. And after it gets a little softer, uh, then I add maybe some um, cacao or cocoa powder. Uh, I'm really stuck on chocolate. I love chocolate. Uh, sometimes I'll add a tablespoon of um, organic peanut butter to make it taste richer. You can make any flavor ice, nice cream you want. Um, I but, like butter pecan. Yeah. It's just plain nice cream with uh, pecans. With pecans and a little maple syrup. It's delicious. Um, you can put frozen strawberries. You got to put frozen fruit in with the bananas. Otherwise, it's mush. Um, and then what I do is I just put it all into a container and if we want a couple scoops, I just take it out, let it warm up a little bit and scoop it like ice cream. Nice. And it's absolutely delicious. And oh, I make vegan low fat chocolate syrup to put on it. <laughs> it's really yeah. good. There's wonderful recipes on the internet. <laughs> That's great. Well, on your YouTube channel, I, I only watched a couple of them, but you, you didn't show yourselves. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, but, and I was just going to make a recommendation because you guys look so amazing and that's part of it. Maybe you'd want to show yourself. We'll show a picture of us. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that was a, an issue mainly with Fran. Uh, and uh, we, we were so new, we, we, we didn't read, we would write out a script of what we were going to talk about. Say we do something on uh, the, the five main ways to reduce stress or to live a stress-free life. And it was very, we were not very natural in front of a camera. We seemed to be okay speaking extemporaneously when a good interviewer like AJ comes <laughs> along. But for us to uh, stay on script without screwing it up uh, wasn't good. So we decided to make it more like a podcast and so any tips that uh, you can pass to me, anybody better than at YouTube than me, which is probably all of you out there, uh, maybe you could help, help us with that. Well, maybe one of your grandchildren could help you, but, but I, I, because it is a visual medium and because part of what you're selling is how great you look, I would think that at least from the beginning to the end, welcome people, let them see that you really do look this good. Yeah. I think that uh, we've done some intros that were that were you know that were um, featured us live, and uh, they were pretty good. People like that, but uh, I, we'll work on that. I think it's a good suggestion. Yeah, Carol says, "Is there any particular brand of vitamins you like?" 
oh, various companies. I really don't want to get into brands right now. I don't, you know. Okay. I think, yeah. Well, no worries. <laughs> I, I, I just use the ones they sell at True North. It's called Pure Encapsulation. I figure if it, Dr. Goldhammer approves it, it's okay. Yeah. okay. So what, you know, I'm curious, like, how important do you think the attitude is towards aging well? Because you guys seem to have just a great spirit. And, you know, a lot of old people, like, you know, I, I used to be an activity director. And, and so oh. many old people, they're just, they've given up. They're, they're, you might, they're that people 20 years younger than you. And they're depressed and they have these chronic diseases. So how much does the mental part play? Well, I think mental, the, there is a mental part. But we think it's mostly about choices. So we wrote an article some time ago called Say Yes to Life. So I use an example of uh, a friend of mine. I, I, I asked him, I said, uh, how would you like to go uh, to lunch? And we'll go to an Indian restaurant. Oh, I can't stand Indian food. It's just not for me. Well, you ever, have you ever tasted Indian food? Well, not really. I haven't really <laughs> tasted it. So we think when opportunities come up, when new people may enter your life, when new ideas come along, like for us, YouTube, don't say no, say yes, give it a try. And that those kind of choices enable you to actually reverse your age. So we're really 104. <laughs> now we're in our 80s and we're going down every year. So, yeah. Oh, Louise wants to know how long you guys have been married. I'll, I'll see if Bob can answer that. <laughs> I think it's 58 years. Good, he got it. 58. I wrote it on my hand in case I was asked. <laughs> we we met during orientation week at college, and we got married a week after graduation. It's been hell. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are amazing, man. There was no life before. <laughs> the have you ever been any place like, I don't know, like any of the vegan cruises or the Stanford Inn, any place like that? Not, no, not, no. A, not any of the vegan cruises. We, we taught on cruise ships. We taught uh, Tai Chi uh, and Qigong on cruise ships for, for several years. And we got, uh, it, was, it was great. It was a free cruise. <laughs> and, uh, but not, no, not, 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 not that vegan thing. I would like to do one of those. I would like to be one of the speakers on one of those. <laughs> I think you guys would be great. Uh, actually, well, you know, I, I I know Sandy. You never know. Maybe he'll say yes. I don't know when they're going to actually sail again. I know. Uh, that's I, true. know. I, I wish Jack Lalane was alive to know you. Uh, I would like to have met him too. <laughs> yeah, I met his wife. I interviewed her. That was yeah. one of my yeah. favorite interviews. She's just like, yeah. she was amazing. She is but amazing. Yeah. I, I think, you know, Jack was a famous person and, and a role model for a lot of people. But you don't have to be famous to do this stuff. You can just do it in your own little way and really see, you could just see after a month or two, how your energy level changes, how your outlook changes, how you want to start doing more, learning more, and even teaching more. So we say, say yes to life. Don't say no. And, uh, and embrace change. I think people, as they age, a lot of people get stuck in the mud. Nah, I don't want to do that. I've always done it this way. That's no fun. Those are choices that we all have to make. And uh, we, we, we want the excitement of life. That's just part of it. And that can go on till you're 100 years old. Or more. Yeah. 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 I mean, we all know people, I'm sure, who you know, when the flu season comes, so they know they're going to get the flu. And they do. Yeah. Yeah. That's like sort of uh, <laughs> the law of attraction. Yeah. yeah. You learn what you think. So yeah. If you think you're going to get sick, I guarantee it. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I just finished hosting a nine day GI health summit. And one of the doctors said, even your thoughts can affect your microbiome. Can oh, you believe absolutely. It? So. Yeah, well, you guys are you guys are definitely young at heart. Romine wants to know if you demonstrate any of your qigong on your YouTube channel. Yes. Yeah, we've got about uh, I'd say thirty or so qigong-oriented videos, 
And those you just follow along. We do a step-by-step -step instruction. So it's like having a teacher right in your living room. So just go to the YouTube channel, Young at Any Age, and go to the playlist and you'll see Qigong is a whole playlist of videos. That's so cool. And, and that was one of the things they were saying for people with GI health, you know, these things like Qigong and Tai Chi, all those, those ancient wisdoms. Yes. Yeah. We strongly believe in that. I think uh, it's, it's just been an important part of our life. We learned so much traveling and living in Asia. We met uh, these wisdom teachers from all over and uh, I'll, I'll always remember one uh, wisdom teacher. This was a, a doctor who was a monk and he had a, a practice, a medical practice in Kathmandu on the top of a mountain. And he talked about, we were talking about breath and he said, you know, it's our belief that you were given a certain amount of breaths in your lifetime. So he strongly advised to breathe more slow, slow down your breathing. So Fran and I breathe maybe three or four breaths, deep breaths in a minute. But if you see a person that may be a bit overweight or a person that's sick, they're breathing 20 times a minute. So that guy told me that well, I had a limited amount of breaths to use. So I slowed down my <laughs> breathing. Qigong, by the way, is very good for doing that. It slows you down. And then when your body slows down, your mind gets Quiets more <laughs> quiet and calm. So we get rid of that monkey mind, that, that constant flow of stuff going through your head. Yeah, well, Qigong is actually meditation in motion. Yes. Well, that if that's true, we have a limited amount of, amount of breaths. I'm screwed because I've suffered from anxiety a lot. And so I, I tend to be a fast breather. So, <laughs> but Qigong might be something for you to try. I know. It, so, it sounds great. It sounds amazing. Question, do you guys drink any alcohol? We drink wine. You know, just like Blue Zones, wine every day. Oops. Five o'clock. All the hours <laughs> is at six o'clock. <laughs> So we have a glass of wine. We don't overdo it. We like red wine and uh, chocolate. <laughs> you guys are like, you guys are uh, just are amazing. How, yeah. how long do you guys sleep every night? Well, we sleep, With I would say eight seven, hours. seven, seven to, to eight nine hours. hours, seven to nine hours. But yeah. we think that's another thing that's not talked about enough. It's really important to get sleep. We've got some really good videos on our channel, if I may say, about <laughs> sleep. Using Qigong to sleep, just do a little Qigong before you go to bed, right at your bedside. It calms you down. It, it'll change your sleeping habits. So you could check that out too. But sleep is underrated. We don't talk about it enough. So it's really want, important. If you want to be energized during the day, you better get some good solid sleep at night. Absolutely. And then when you get up, you do your morning hour of power, you're going to knock them dead. Yeah. Do you guys have any pets? Yeah. Any pets? Well, after our, we say, <laughs> we had this saying that life begins when the last child leaves home and the last pet dies because <laughs> we started traveling. And when you're traveling, it's really, you know, couldn't hard to, pet. yeah. So until, um, yeah, we, we were traveling every year until recently. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this will be our first winter in a cold place since 1977. Yeah, we're cold just thinking about it. <laughs> wow. Well, you guys are incredible. I hope I get to see you, you know, speak at when, when we open up again, or even now, I'll definitely watch more of the videos on your okay, channel. Good. People, you know, people are I, really enjoying this. It's I just- I want to thank you. I appreciate this opportunity. I, I, uh, I feel very honored that you asked us to, uh, to talk with you and to meet your audience and uh, we, we're very grateful for that. Are you kidding? This is a, this is my favorite kind of interview. I love it. Have you ever thought of submitting your story to Forks Over Knives? We, well, yeah. we just did. Just uh, coincidentally, I saw where they they uh, they asked for success stories. Uh, we did send, uh, we were picked up, we got lucky. There's a an online magazine called The Beat, B-E-E-T. Yep. And uh, they picked up our story and it sort of 
we picked up like a thousand subscribers in two days. That's fantastic. Yeah. And well, one of the girls, Karen, who Karen asked who writes for, she's going to be on the show in January. So people oh, yeah. are really, they've been, it, it, they've been so nice to us. And uh, so they, they publish anything that we send them. They're, they're very good people and they know how to eat. Yeah. And I'll tell you something. We love telling our stories because it just seems that almost no doctors understand that what you eat can change your health. Um, and it's, it's, it's just so important to let people know that they don't have to be sick, that yeah. we literally are what we eat. Yeah, well, that's yeah. been my message for a while, but, but yeah. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if people are just so addicted to certain foods or they just, just I, but you're so right. What you eat definitely matters. I mean, we, we had one of our Qigong students who had type 2 diabetes. Her doctor put her on a keto diet. Ugh. And she lost her eyesight. Not it's so worth. sad. I mean. Yeah. So have you, I know you, you your, do your children live all different places? Yeah, all different places. <laughs> Orlando, Chicago. We're from Chicago originally. And California. And California. So we're going to do a Zoom yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, we're having Zoom Thanksgiving. Yeah. What are you making for Thanksgiving, by the way? Glad you asked. Don't look at Bob. What He's are not we eating? <laughs> a seitan roast and um, potatoes, mashed, mashed potatoes, potatoes and gravy, vegan gravy. And uh, I just got a recipe for um, bread stuffing healthy bread stuffing and uh, sweet potatoes and and nice cream of no, course no turkey <laughs> <laughs> i wish you guys would move out to the desert because we 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 can we have a lot of people that could use your help because they they don't have healthy habits well we don't have to go to the desert for that they're everywhere yeah that's true oh mm -hmm. christy says do yeah. you think it's important to eat a salad every day um, it, it depends on what you're eating. Like, do you, okay there? Yeah, sorry. Ah, I'm gonna lose water. you. Okay. Um, mostly we have a salad, at least one salad a day. Today we didn't because we had the full, oh, and I had some leftover vegetable tempura from yesterday. So we had cooked vegetables instead of a salad. But you, yeah, some vegetables though, at oh, least, if, if not a salad, yeah. A lot of vegetables, a lot of grains. Yeah, very good. AJ, what do you do about salads? Well, actually, you can't hear this, but my husband's chopping it right now. We have that Holland bowl, and we take all these, the power greens from Costco, the 1.5 pound bag, and we add red cabbage, green cabbage, and carrots, and we chop it real fine, and we, we, do it, we, we don't always get two in, but we get one in every day, Great. at least, a okay, big one. Good. Yeah, well, it's been so fun. I hope I get to meet you guys in person sometime. I have a friend. Nice. I, I actually, while we were on the show, I I texted a friend of mine who produces events in Maryland. And I said, if you do it, I don't want to, I've done 19. I'm not doing live events anymore. I said, you have to have these people come to your event. Thank you for that. We look Absolutely. forward to the day when we can do things in person again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who knows when that will be? It seems oh, like God. a long you, time ago. Yeah. AJ, it won't keep you, but to be honest, uh, we do this. I mean, we're, we don't make a dime on anything. We, uh, well, we do have a book. We wrote a book called 101 Ways to Be Young at Any Age. 101 Ways to Be Young at Any Age. It's $12.95. You can buy it on Amazon. And uh, all the proceeds, 100% of the proceeds go to an anti-human trafficking organization, a child trafficking organization that we have. Uh, but our mission in life at this age is to inspire others to, to, to think about changing their life by changing their diet and just giving it a try. We want people to live longer. People today are living longer, sicker. We just want people to live longer and healthier. That's our whole idea. And we want to inspire other people. We want to be role models for other people because we're just normal everyday people. We're not superstars and we're not famous. And I'm saying to the rest of you who are like us, 
any of us can do it. So don't wait until you get sick. Yeah. People wait until they get sick before they get serious about doing something. Don't wait. Wouldn't it be nice if you don't have to get sick? This plant-based diet thing is a preventative measure. It prevents you from getting sick. And if you are sick, it can reverse that illness. And you've heard this over and over again, but we advocate that. And uh, we wish you all a, a happy and long life. If you know of anybody else that wants to interview us, we're free, we do it. And uh, we want to spread the word. That's what my point is here at the end. Well, and you're doing you can it. have Thanksgiving without turkey. That's right. Well, it looks like you got one next year. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you guys had a good sense of humor. I, I could say that. <laughs> Wanda from the Thanks. NHA is watching, says you guys are terrific. Wanda, they'd make a great story for your wonderful magazine. Um, and Louise is asking if you know JP, John Pierre. No. Nope. Well, we'll have to introduce you. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Oh, oh but the reason she asked is because he does, he does, he has a project child safe. He does a lot of things like oh, that. Good. Tina says, this has been my favorite interview. Thank you. Well, it's been one of mine for sure. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for coming thank on. You. It was Namaste. so great Namaste. meeting you. Thank and you thank so you all much. for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have a wonderful cooking demo from Lauren from the Well Elephant. She's going to be making cauliflower steaks with whipped mashed potatoes and greens. And it's at 11 a.m. Pacific and it's going to be delicious. <laughs> I love what you guys say. Die as young as possible as late as possible. Yeah. That is a great quote. All right. Well, you take care, guys. Have a good evening. Bye. Happy Bye. Thanksgiving. Thank you.